one thing I've learned, which you know, and I, and I went out of my way not to be an expert in, in the wine business. I didn't want to be an expert. I want to be someone who enjoys the wine with my meal, and that's all I care about. So I don't, I, I don't know so much. I can't take a sip and rattle off a lot of interesting wine speak because I don't know it. I just know whether it pleases me, and what pleases me is that it be delicious and that it appear fresh, that it has a, a life to it. It's not, you know, some uh, uh, mummified uh, alcohol. Uh, so I have a very honest relationship with wine, and, and uh, I like wine that has finesse and that has a subtlety to it and, and, uh, and, and beauty, uh, which, I, which I feel we are achieving with these great Inglenook wines. Here's a 2017, I mean, this wine is very enjoyable, but really you gotta drink it in 20 years to see what it really is. And the same with uh, even our 2011, it's still a bit young. <laughs> so uh, the, to really get what an Inglenook could be, you wanna, you wanna have a 2005 or a 2000. But I learned one thing about great wine, and it's interesting because great wine is nothing more than great vineyards well made without mistakes. We made a lot of wine from when we first bought the property around 78. And I have these wines that were made by different winemakers, but from always from these grapes. Some were good, some were less good. Uh, I thought, oh, it was because the winemaker was better and then the new winemaker wasn't as good or was better or what have you. But you know, you go down there now and you start tasting those wines, 1978, 1979, 1980, 81, they're all wonderful. What happened between when we first had them the first few years and now, which is what, 30 years later, 40, is time. <laughs> and that's the magic thing that great grapes made correctly will out over time and emerge into what they really are. So I, I taste this 2017, it's very enjoyable for a, a young wine. It shouldn't even be, it's what, what people would say, it's infanticide now to drink this wine. But this wine in 20 years, 30 years, 40 years, 50 years, and so on, is going to just, what I've learned about Inglenook and the difference between the truly great wines of the world and the less enjoyable but less great wines is what happens to them over time. This, this is wonderful, by the way. Isn't it a beautiful wine? So in 2017, it's crazy. This is, this is not even able to walk yet. The Cabernet is, for me, the wine that first indicates like a little alarm goes off because there comes a point when you're drinking the Cabernet and then you drink a glass of it and you say, wow, this has really gotten good. And then you go back to the Rubicon and, and the Rubicon follows it. And of course the Rubicon gets good but keeps getting good. And, and if there's a difference between the Rubicon and the Cabernet, it's just over time, in my opinion. That's wonderful. It's, I mean, you know, not, you know, as I said, for 2017, it's not that different. Yeah. yeah. Five years, it will be more different. Well, originally, it, it was made with a Chardonnay and Viognier and Marsan Roussan. And then after a while, we dropped the Chardonnay out and felt it was better. But Plancano has another dimension. It's, it's really a unique wine. Mm -hmm. It's something only we do.